sorry. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting the, 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 the host of the show. What? Schefter reporting Aaron Rodgers to the New York Jets. Wow. There you go. How do you like them I apples? I said it in a meeting today. It was going to happen. Wow. And it happened. And do we have the details? Figured, there's so much going on. Yeah, let's All right, let's Anthony, get... what's the details? All right, so according to Schefter's Twitter, the Jets get Aaron Rodgers, pick number 15, and a 20, in 2023 and a fifth-round pick. The Packers get pick number 13, a 2023 second-round pick, number 42, a sixth-round pick, number 207, and a conditional 2024 second. That pick becomes a first if Rodgers plays 65% of the plays. The deal is done. I got to tell you guys. Not bad. Joe, Doug- Joe Douglas is very good at what he does. I mean, essentially, just, he, he flipped the 13th for the 15th pick. Fi- they, the they other dropped- stuff doesn't concern me. Right, that's what I'm saying. So, wait, you get Aaron Rodgers, you go back two picks in the draft, and then you worry about giving up a six-round pick, number 207 or overall, and, num- and, a, and a conditional 2024 second-round pick? And then it could be oh, a first-round pick in 25. So he's got to pay 65% of two years, right, Anthony? Becomes a first rounder if he plays sixty five percent of the plays. I think it's this year. Just this year? Well, it says twenty twenty four second. So you'd have to think that since it's the next year's pick, right? Yeah, you'd be worried yeah. about the season after. Well, then that's this a, then that's a lot. So the twenty twenty four pick becomes a first rounder if he plays sixty five percent of this year. Yeah. So you gave up a first round pick for one year. Now, the first-round pick for the Jets could be that, awful if no, he plays They're well. hoping it's 32. Right. Then you're not going to care. And they're hoping it's going to be a low pick. And then they have multiple second-round picks, so you're giving up number 42 of the second. And, you know, but you're you know, not, not giving that up. Because if it, if it, if it advances to a, a, a one, then you're giving up the one, not the right. two. You, what, basically this. You basically can ignore the first round, right? The third. No, no, no. no. Uh, I'm sorry. I just want to... It's a it's the it's the thirteenth overall pick, a twenty twenty three second round pick, right. That, right? A sixth round pick and a conditional twenty twenty four second round pick that, that becomes, becomes a first, first round right. pick. So they're still giving up a second round pick. That's the big so on the big, Friday. The bigger one is the second round pick they lose Friday. Yeah, because basically the first round's a swap, right? Fifteen for thirteen, whatever. They weren't going to get a quarterback anyway. It's whatever. The fact that they lose the second round pick is something. Six rounder you live with, and then to Michael's point, it looks like in all likelihood you will that will end up then being another first rounder mm-hmm. in a couple of years. I still think that's a pretty good job by Joe Douglas. Obviously, if, if Aaron Rodgers turns out to be Aaron Rodgers. It, I think it's, it's a great job by the pack too. If you want my opinion, no, it is. I mean, I, I think it, I think it's both general managers can feel good about themselves, especially the Packers for what you know the the draft equity they get. And Michael, you were arguing about the third. There's a difference between 13 and 15. Oh, I know. You know, so they did cave a little bit on the first round pick. They do lose two spots, but that fifth round, that second round pick's not nothing this year. No, it's a number forty-two pick. It's a forty number forty-two overall pick in a thirty-two team league. It's the tenth pick in the second round. But isn't that the pick they got in the uh, the deal for them? Oh yeah, they got multiple picks in the second right. round. That's why they felt like it was expendable. Um, I just don't like that the next year's pick in twenty twenty-four becoming a first round if he plays sixty-five percent of his games. But if he plays sixty-five percent of his games. Which and we know that means in year one sixty five. Well, it has of to games? be if it's, if it's the twenty twenty four first round pick, right? Because next year is the twenty twenty four draft. So all the only knowledge we'll have is what he played in the first year, because the second year would come after the twenty twenty four draft. Well, guys, Jets fans, you have you Aaron Rodgers. Playoffs? What? Yankees? Who? <laughs> That's what, Wesco? Finally. Finally. I told you. I didn't Don, even sweat Don losing my job. Don doesn't lose his job. Thank nope. goodness. Let's bring in our very own Rich Samini, who's covered the Jets forever. So, Rich, tell me about the um, the particulars in this, and what do you think um, of, of what the Jets gave up? Thanks, Michael. <clears throat> yeah, this came in about where we thought uh, we were speculating on. So, they're flipping places in this year's draft. So, it's going to be they'll go from 13 to 15. And uh, that's roughly the equivalent of a high fourth rounder. They're also giving up a fifth rounder this year. Um, and check that. They're also giving up a second rounder this year, the 42nd pick, which we knew about. We've been speculating that for, for weeks. And also a sixth rounder. The thing that's a little bit interesting is next year, uh, it's very likely that they're going to give up a first round pick next year uh, because it's a conditional second right now and it goes to a one if he plays in 65% of the plays. So if Aaron Rodgers is healthy next year, he's obviously going to play in that 
many plays. And so essentially what the Jets are giving up is like a second rounder this year and more than likely a first rounder next year to get Aaron Rodgers, which is pretty steep for a 39-year-old quarterback who, look, may only play one year. Now, the, I was interested by that as well. 65% of the plays, so I hated math. The, the, how, what does that amount to? Maybe, what, three, four games? I mean, that could be the difference of you winning the Super Bowl and, and missing the playoffs. If he got hurt and missed, like, the last four games of the season and you missed the playoffs and have to fork over a first-round pick the next year, that could sting. Well, not only that, Don, because uh, let's let's just take the worst-case scenario, which you just described pretty well there, but say he decides after that to only play one year, the Jets quite likely are going to be in the market for a quarterback in the 24 draft and, and won't have their first-round pick. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be would be difficult, and it's a very good quarterback class for next year. Of course, with a couple of really good players in the twenty four draft. So yeah, that's that's kind of the worst case scenario. Uh, the Jets obviously are all in here. This is Super Bowl or bust. They didn't make this move to just sneak into the playoffs. Woody Johnson, got to give him credit here. I mean. Going all in, he stuck to his gun through this entire process. He could have diverted and maybe gone after a, a Ryan Tannehill or someone of that ilk, but he stuck to his guns and went for Rodgers. So Woody is all in. I, I will tell you this, though. I, I think you just hit on it yourself. I, I think it's a lot to give up for a guy who's going to play one year. I, I, I really do. Maybe he plays two years, but if they don't win a Super Bowl this year, do I really feel good about giving up a first-round pick next year for this guy for one year? Yeah, I thought I think a couple of weeks ago, I know the Jets were looking for some protection on the back end just in case he only played one year. They wanted the ability to maybe get back a pick in 2025 from Green Bay, but uh, based on from what I'm seeing now, they're they're not getting any of that you know protection on the back well, end. What was so, Green Bay's uh, leverage though, so, yeah. Rich? What what was their leverage? Yeah, I don't know. They didn't have a lot of leverage here, Mike, because I thought the pressure was on Green Bay coming into this draft because they wanted to obviously get something out of this. Draft. The part we don't know yet is the contract. So I'm curious to see if Green Bay is eating some of that money. Uh, I would think that they would based on the the level of this compensation because if the Jets are taking on this entire contract, which is $59 million this year, and giving up that compensation, that's an awful lot. I thought Green Bay would eat some, and maybe they have. I just don't know that part yet, but that's the part we're waiting for to come out. Now, what was the motivation to have it happen now, especially with the reports that Rodgers probably wasn't going to report to the uh, voluntary OTAs or maybe not even show up till May anyway? Well, they were going to have to get this done before the draft just because of the salary cap implications. The Jets don't have a lot of cap room right now. They're, they're under $8 million. Rodgers is going to be probably about $16 million for the, on their cap. So they were going to have to do different things and restructure some contracts uh, ahead of him actually joining the roster and, and perhaps his own restructuring of his own contract. So I think I think it gives the teams and also gives the teams more of a, a you know, like a runway into the draft. You know, the Packers obviously are, have more draft capital to deal with and the Jets are in a different position in some rounds. So it gives the teams a chance to let the dust settle and go into the draft. I know you have some writing to do, Rich. Thanks for popping on with us. All right, you're welcome, guys. Take care. All right, that's Rich Samini. Mm-hmm. So the more I think about it, I think they gave up a lot. I, it's a lot. I really do. I, it, it, the, obviously, going 13 to 15, that's cool. The second rounder, that's cool. The first rounder next year, because he is going to play 65%, and if he doesn't play 65%, then the whole thing blew up in their face anyway. They're not making the playoffs with Zach Wilson as their quarterback, so now he's got to play 65% of the plays because he is – Even when he's hurt, he plays. He's a very, very sturdy quarterback. I think that's a lot. I think that's a lot for a 39-year-old who who might not play next year. I, I, what, what was the Jets' motivation to give that up, and what was the Packers' leverage? Now, what if the Jets feel very confident? That he's playing two years. That's what it feels like to me. Does that change your take on it all, Michael? If if they know, he's told them he's staying two years. Slightly. No, I think I, I think a lot more because then then you don't necessarily care about the first round pick because you're not going to be in search of a quarterback if you know he's going to play in 2024. Uh, they must have some indication because I think this deal looks a lot better if you know he's playing in 2024. Now that's a lot 
to have to go on because Rodgers could very easily change his mind. Right. He'd go into the dark room in the offseason and then say, well, listen, I was going to play, but unfortunately I'm not going to play. But this gives me an indication when they spoke to him, they must have some assurance that he has every intention of playing in 2024. Then that first, that potential first-round pick doesn't hurt as much. But like Rich said, Michael, if you've got to start over looking for another quarterback with no first-round pick, then that, that, that's really going to stink. Yeah.